Hello, good morning. My name is Courtney Clark. I am an innovation fellow at the Peace Corps and a community builder for OpenStreetMap. Peace Corps' network of 7,000 volunteers and 200,000 former volunteers is uniquely qualified to empower communities to create, maintain, and use OpenStreetMap. And I want to talk about those opportunities with you today. So I'll kick things off uh, talking about Peace Corps' three goals. We are um, an agency of the United States federal government. We were founded in 1961 by President John F. Kennedy with the mandate to achieve goals. The first is to help the people of interested countries in meeting their need for trained men and women. So we send Americans abroad for two years to countries that have invited the Peace Corps to participate in development projects. Our volunteers also help promote a better understanding of Americans on the part of the peoples that they serve. So they share American culture, holidays, food, their friends and family with their host communities. And the, the final part of that cross-cultural exchange is that our volunteers also help promote a better understanding of other peoples on the part of Americans. So both during their service and after, our volunteers are sharing their host country culture with their friends and families and organizations back in the United States through presentations, blogs, pen pal programs. And so to that end, as I said, we have 7,000 volunteers currently in 65 countries in Africa, Latin America, Asia, Eastern Europe, and the Middle East. Our volunteers really specialize in developing profound relationships with their host communities because they are living there for two years at the level of the community cooking the food, um, wearing local clothing, learning the local language. For example, I was a volunteer in Guinea and West Africa for the last two years, and I did public health education. Uh, I'm pictured here with my two best friends in Guinea, Binta and Hadiatu. They're 13-year-old girls, and we spent hours to together every single day doing laundry, getting water from the pump, cooking rice, having dance parties, um, and that relationship that I built with them over the course of two years allowed me to have honest conversations about their educational opportunities and their future goals and ambitions um, that just would not have been possible if I wasn't spending um, two years of my life with them. Our volunteers lead grassroots development projects. Uh, we don't come in with a budget or really financial or physical resources, though grants are available for small projects. For example, um, this is a volunteer in Guatemala. She formed an after-school girls' leadership program, and they created a tire garden out of recycled materials. So our volunteers, they work in youth development, community economic development, public health, education, agriculture, and environment. And our volunteers really specialize in skills transfer and trainings of trainers because we believe that knowledge is the best resource that we can give a community. For example, here is a women's conference in Guinea that I helped coordinate. And we spent three days with Guinean female university students helping them facilitate their own discussions about women's leadership in the Guinean context um, and also helping them with their job search process. And finally, our, our volunteers are so passionate about sharing their host country's culture with Americans. So here's a volunteer at a school fair back in the States. She's teaching some American students how to carry a basket on their head because that was something that was done in her host community. Okay, so how did we get involved with OpenStreetMap? Um, a few years ago, our office, the Office of Innovation, was attending um, an intensive 10-day malaria prevention training for our African volunteers and staff. It was hosted in Senegal. And OpenStreetMap was one of many sessions over the 10 days. But it really piqued our interest, as well as the interest of a few volunteers who went back to their uh, host countries all around the African continent and started building local OpenStreetMap communities where they lived. 
Um, I personally became involved after I was evacuated from Guinea because of the Ebola crisis last August. Um, my fellow volunteers and I, we were all over the United States temporarily living with our parents and feeling very frustrated um, that we felt like we couldn't do anything tangible to help our Ghanaian um, host families and friends. So we did some fundraising, okay? But we were really excited about OpenStreetMap and we started hosting virtual mappy hours with each other. We mapped our, our former communities because we had such detailed local knowledge and we also mapped for the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. Here's a screenshot of one of those video chats. And it was through this Ebola response that we were exposed to the incredible international coordination around using mapping top technology. And we realized that there was an opportunity for the Peace Corps to be part of that international coordination because we really do specialize in capacity building. So we've identified three key opportunities that the Peace Corps can participate in and help grow the OpenStreetMap community. First is that local e OpenStreetMap capacity building. Drishti was just talking about how, how critically important that is if we want OpenStreetMap to truly cover the whole world. And this is part of our office's role, um, is exposing the agency to free, open, and crowdsource platforms. Our second two opportunities center on crowdsource mapping, both by our Peace Corps alumni and by American students. So this, of course, aligns very well with our support of the Open Government Initiative and um, our government's official commitments to open, open government through our open government plan. Um, you know, we recognize we don't have all the answers and we can't solve all of the problems. So we're really, really excited about increasing citizen participation in government. And we also are happy to be part of um, some groups that are connecting with the next generation of OpenStreetMap contributors and, of course, Peace Corps volunteers. So I'll do a little bit of a deeper dive into that OpenStreetMap community building in our 7,000 communities. That process starts with trainings from our office for Peace Corps volunteers and counterparts in OpenStreetMap. After that, the community and the volunteer actively map together. And then our end game here is that long after the volunteer leaves, the community uh, will continue to maintain and develop, and develop the open street mapping activities. So to support this process, our office has just released four OpenStreetMap toolkits and a community mapping training guide to volunteers around the world, and there will be more to come. Here's a map of our current OpenStreetMap capacity building projects. We have a very, very strong community in Botswana with additional projects in Namibia, Mozambique, Senegal, the Dominican Republic, and Nicaragua and plans are underway for additional projects in Benin, Tanzania, and Ghana. Here's an image of a Peace Corps community uh, doing, a field, doing street mapping with field papers in Botswana. And a community in Nicaragua at the local computer lab learning how to edit their own villages in ID Editor. OpenStreetMap has really been transforming the Peace Corps experience for our volunteers who are involved as well. So I want to share with you a little case study from Botswana. We had a volunteer who attended one of those malaria prevention trainings and learned about OpenStreetMap. She went back to Botswana and she crowdsourced the creation of her base map. She called out to her friends and family back in the States had them learn the ID editor, and they digitized her entire community because, they didn't because she didn't have the internet connection to do so herself. After that, she worked with the host community, and they added their local knowledge and refined the map. The next step was a geocoded survey. So there was what's called an indoor residual spraying campaign in her community. Um, and that is where teams go from house to house in a given village and spray the inside of the house with a pesticide. It's safe for humans, but very deadly for mosquitoes. And studies have shown that if you reach 80% of the houses in any given village, 
that you will actually be breaking um, the cycle of malaria transmission, which is really exciting, except before using OpenStreetMap, there was no way for this program to, to have a secondary source that could actually verify if the teams had reached 80% of those houses. So it was a bit of a shot in the dark. And no one could really say with authority necessarily, you know, we have reached our target goal. So this is the map that they created using QGIS. And it shows down to the GPS coordinate which houses were sprayed and which were not and why. And they presented this data at Botswana's National Malaria Control Program, who was then able to really analyze how they would go about a second pass at spraying and knew exactly which houses still wanted to be sprayed and how to get to that 80% mark. So OpenStreetMap has been making data-driven and accountable decisions um, much more possible for our Peace Corps projects. Our second opportunity is this crowdsourced humanitarian mapping led by our 200,000 former volunteers. You know, we're always trying to expand the network of people who are engaged with the Peace Corps and with our mission. And OpenStreetMap is an excellent way to accomplish that. Our alumni remain very well connected to the countries that they serve. And when something happens, like a crisis, we're able to tap into that network and mobilize them. Of course, we also have alumni contributing to OpenStreetMap to many countries in non-crisis situations as well. So for example, here are some volunteers who served in Vanuatu. They're adding their local knowledge to OpenStreetMap right after Tropical Cyclone Pam earlier this year. <clears throat> and we have some volunteers who served in Guyana. And they're hosting a Mappy Hour just because. And our third opportunity is engaging with American students. So we've been engaging students since our founding. We have a very long history of a pen pal program and school presentations to help American students better understand the countries that we serve. But we've started infusing those interactions with OpenStreetMap. This is a very exciting, exciting blended learning model that's attracting the attention of both educators and students because it allows the students to play a very active role in the development process. And I love how this project shows the power of crowdsourcing. So on one side, we have these communities overseas who are requesting help with building base maps, because maybe they don't always have the internet connection to do that. We have students in the US who need to build cross-cultural and spatial reasoning skills, struggling to do so, because those opportunities are not always readily available in American schools. And it's fantastic that the Peace Corps volunteer through this project can sort of serve as a bridge between those two needs. So far, we have trained 140 at an open street map for Peace Corps communities, and that is just through a small pilot. So we're going to spend this summer scaling for the next school year and hopefully take this program to a national level. I wanted to share with you this quote from Olivia. She's a sixth grader at Alice Steele Middle School in Washington, DC. And I think she really sums up why we're all so passionate about OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap helps people all over the world get a better understanding of where things are around the world because these places are not mapped. I believe that if more people contribute to help map places around the world, the whole world will be connected. So we've definitely faced our fair share of challenges. This is no walk in the park, especially trying to build the capacity of 7,000 volunteers and their counterparts in what is a pretty decentralized organization. Um, so that decentralization works well for the Peace Corps in many ways. It also means that it's, uh, it can be difficult to reach all of those volunteers, get them excited about OpenStreetMap, train them in the necessary skills. And that's made even more difficult because a lot of our volunteers may, might only have internet access once a month. And maybe they're not gonna use that precious internet time necessarily to go seeking out an opportunity like OpenStreetMap. So we're, we're working to overcome that by actually traveling like to countries and hosting trainings in countries themselves. 
We've also had our, our challenges, sometimes motivating key agency stakeholders. I'm sure everyone in this room knows what it's like to try and explain OpenStreetMap to someone who's just not getting it necessarily, or like doesn't get excited about the map the same, that, the same way that you do. So we've been working actually with our partners in Washington, DC, and around the world um, to help, uh, communicate this project to our, to our stakeholders. And of course, we always have problems with data quality. So we're training our alumni, we're training students at OpenStreetMap, and we definitely focus on quality data in those trainings. But we do have time constraints. So sometimes we end up with not the best edits. So we're also facing that challenge. So we're going to continue developing and promoting these OpenStreetMap toolkits, and we want to share them with this community as well because they think, we think that they can be really helpful for multiple organizations who maybe want to build local OpenStreetMap um, capacity. We'll be integrating uh, the Open Map Kit app that the Red Cross has developed, and we're going to um, increase our in-country OpenStreetMap trainings as well in the coming months. This summer, we're also going to train our former volunteers to work with American students in OpenStreetMap. So right now, we've had Peace Corps staff going to schools and doing these OpenStreetMap sessions with the students. Um, we're going to pull back from that because we just don't have the human resources. And instead, we're going to mobilize those 200,000 former volunteers um, to go into schools and teach OpenStreetMap because they're already going to schools. It's something they're doing, so we're just going to beef it up with OpenStreetMap. And as part of that, we'll have an OpenStreetMap certification for our former volunteers because we know that it's a very valuable resume tool. And we'll have badging for the students who are involved as well. So I invite you to join us in this project. Please find me or email me at this address if we should be partnering. If you are working perhaps in a developing country, we might be there as well. And we want to support your efforts to build local OpenStreetMap capacity. You can also join our Facebook group. I'll put the URL up in a minute. And you can actually connect with those volunteers who are using OpenStreetMap in the field, share resources, learn from their case studies. So here's that URL, if you guys want to take a picture, write it down really quick. I can also tweet it out. And actually, to get the conversation going, I have some questions for you. And then I'll, I'll take questions from you. Um, so please feel welcome to answer in person. You can also tweet links or names or whatever it might be to my handle. But my first question is, for anyone, how could our organizations work together? Is there anyone in the audience that is doing work that could support our efforts? Awesome, please share. I'm with Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. So you can see why. There's lots of, lots of things we can do more together. Absolutely. Um, so just to repeat, she works with the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, and that's definitely an organization that we want to connect with and, and keep working with. Thank you. Yeah? Marquette uh, University certification curriculum uh, for future volunteers. Um, so that's, that's one uh, uh, pathway. Perfect. So there's a university that has a certification program for future Peace Corps volunteers, and we'd love to get them involved with OpenStreetMap um, long before they ever get on a plane to go serve. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, well, you can tweet at me as well. Um, is there anyone else that we should be part of? Maybe they're not even in this room, but a different organization that you all know of? No? Okay. I think there probably is, but we'll work on that. Um, and then <laughs> what else? What can we do better? I'd love your feedback and your suggestions for improving these, these projects. Don't be shy. OK, well, I know we're not perfect, so maybe you want to find me afterwards and give me like more individual feedback. I would very much appreciate that. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm now happy to answer any questions that you might have for me. Yeah. 
Um, I have a question as someone who's been interested in serving in Peace Corps. Uh, I suppose it would be two parts. One would be um, what your opinion would be on uh, committing to that time like before or after pursuing grad school. And then secondly, how the placement process works. And uh, if I have a background in GIS or geospatial, like how likely am I to get placed somewhere where I do that and not end up doing something else? Okay, those are great questions. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the first part was if I have any advice, if you know, joining the Peace Corps would be better before or after graduate school. Um, that's really an individual preference. We do partner with several graduate schools, more than several, quite a few actually, um, where you can be pursuing your graduate degree and do Peace Corps service as part of that and actually like earn academic credit while you're for your graduate degree. So that might be something you could actually combine the two together. Um, and then the second question was, if you have a GIS background, how could you use that in the Peace Corps? How could you make sure you're placed um, appropriately? Well, I will say, for example, our program in Mexico is very GIS focused. So if you go to our website and look at our opportunities, we actually have some that have GIS, like job descriptions, to be a volunteer in Mexico. So you might want to check that out. But these volunteers, um, they're infusing GIS into the sectors where they're working without some sort of formal program. So I would also encourage you to think about serving in a different country and actually introducing GIS to that program if you're interested in maybe agriculture or environment or public health. So you could do it both ways. Yeah, thank you. All right, that looks like, oh, we have another question, yeah. Uh, yeah, just um, as far as editors that you use, it looked like most mostly it was ID. Do you have any uh, experience teaching JOSM to folks or other editors, field papers, I guess? It yeah, that's a great question. So to repeat, um, it looks like we use a lot of ID editor. Um, the question was, are we using any others like JOSM or field papers? Um, as far as computer editing, we focus on ID because we think it's a very low barrier um, to entry and probably um, folks in a lot of our host communities or the students might not be at that level of like digital literacy necessary to understand JASM but that could be something for the future. We are using field papers. In fact my colleague is in Senegal right now. He's training 40 volunteers and staff in field papers um, and hopefully Open Map Kit which is the editor that was just created by the, by the Red Cross. Thank you, Courtney. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, my name is Carrie Stokes at USAID. I'm very happy to be collaborating with Peace Corps now moving forward on a similar effort that we're doing in the Geo Center. So my question for you is, as you work to uh, focus on the 200,000 returned Peace Corps volunteers, of which I am also one, do you have a plan for determining the actual places in the world that you would like for them to be mapping? That's a great question. Thank you. Um, so we had a question from Carrie Stokes at the USAID Geo Center, um, also a return Peace Corps volunteer, so that's great. Uh, do we have a plan for our former volunteers, like where we want to direct them in their mapping efforts? Is that correct? So right now we have quite a few tasks up on the humanitarian open street map team tasking manager. So those would always definitely be um, one of our first priorities. And we would encourage our former volunteers to help our current volunteers in their communities get those tasks done. But we also want our former volunteers to be putting their host country on the map. So especially if they've recently returned, they have a great deal of local knowledge as well. I mean, they lived in one community. It's usually a small um, rural community for two years. They know where things are. So we want them to be putting that very high quality data on the map as well. All right, that looks like it's it for questions. Thank you so much.